um hello and we're back so we're just going to have a another look at holly leaves um since the uh, the last little video i've pretty much finished off the leaves i'm fairly happy with where we are with it all um and really i've got the holly berries left to do i've got a mix at the moment of cadmium in fact cadmium red and I've also got some alizarin crimson already mixed up here, slightly dried off. And right next to those two colours, I've got a little bit of what I'm going to use as a shadow colour, which is um, a little bit of purple mixed in with um, more of the cad red, really. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is optional, you can do it as a wet in wet and add it in then. But I'm just going to add in some of the shadows for the berries that are slightly hidden. And sometimes it's just easier to do that in advance. So the ones that are sort of half buried under something else and will be in shadow, I'm just adding in some of this uh, purpley mix. Don't have it too wet, but you do want it quite pale. So not too wet, but quite pale. And then I'm just pulling some of those shadows up into the area that I'll... Um, I want to work from. We already had our lemon or cadmium yellow um, put onto the berries, which is what I did first. I quite like to do that so that you can distinguish all the different shapes and see where your berries are. So I'm just smoothing this out so I don't end up with any really heavy, hard areas. And it really is just a case of work your way around it. Now, this one here is slightly underneath the edge of that leaf. So again, I'm going to put some shadow in it. Damp, damp brush, not too wet. And then I'm just going to smooth those shadows out really so that I don't have too many hard lines to uh, fight past in a minute when I come to put the top layers on. This one also is underneath underneath other berries but it's also underneath the edge of that leaf so it would be casting a shadow. So again I'm just putting this um, shadowy colour in here. Probably these will be um, added to when we paint the final layer. And this one's pretty much a standalone. So I'm ready to go in with my first lot of colours. Cad yellow, uh, sorry, cad red. And um, it's probably easier to, to just follow the pattern that we've already used by putting those shadows in. So I'm just going to go around with these. If you want to leave some light areas, now's a good time to do that. Um, not every single berry is going to have um, a light patch on it. And I'm just adding in a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Again, you want to be careful. These mixes want to be quite... Um, quite thick you don't want them to be running all over the place that done I'm just going to allow that to blend blend along that side and I've just left that small tiny little area of uh, yellow showing through so that really is going to be my highlight again um, just come straight over here Uh, 
and straight into the alizarin. And you don't have to have them all exactly the same tone or exactly the same shade. So this side I'm just going to, to let that uh, just merge on its own. There may be another coat on top of that. Now because cadmium is obviously lighter and a, a different shade to my alizarin, I am cleaning the brush between picking up um, the alizarin and going back into the cadmium. But this is literally just so that I'm not mixing those colours up too much so that there are some variations on it. So this one, I'll put the alizarin in again on this side. Add in a little bit more of that, that purple just to create uh, that shadow down here. And then back into my alizarin. And I'm just going to allow that to bleed its way through. But this one's sitting on top. So I'm quite happy to have some variations in the colour. So it's more cadmium than the one on the other side of it. Again, you've got the benefit, move your board around rather than try and move your arm around. You can do that. It's a, a little bit more difficult for me when I'm trying very hard to, uh, to video what's going on. I'm going to go straight into the alizarin with a little bit of the, uh, the purple in it. Just to give my shadows a little bit more oomph on that side and I'll just leave a tiny little little dot of light there and basically that's that's how you're going to work it. You're going to go all the way around. And it's probably easier to do the underneath berries first. But you can actually do it in any order you're comfortable with. I would say there isn't a, a particularly right or wrong way. Um, if you can move your board around, then that will make it a lot easier. So it's probably less important the order that you do them with. But it just makes more sense to do what's underneath first. Get those taken care of. And then come back up and do what's on the top. So you mix not too much water. You want to be able to control where it's running. But you want it damp enough to allow things to blend together by themselves a little bit. So we'll move back over to that one. And that's got shadowing on that side. You can do it so you can leave a small edge of light around each one. Um, and sometimes I do. 
but often I don't. I quite like... I quite like it when they all blend together. And to get one pressing right up against the other. So here... I'm just going to leave a few little areas of light on this one. And then I'm a bit more fresh cat. So this one has got some shadow on there as well. Just dropping that bottom edge. Now I'm going to damp the rest of the berry and then come back in with my alizarin. The one thing with this is um, pick your paintbrush carefully. Because you can have a really fine paintbrush, but it's not necessarily going to keep um, a good point on it. And although you want something that's um, flexible, you don't want a brush that folds the minute you press it on the paper. And sometimes with a fine brush that can happen. So the brush, um, it just sort of gives away as soon as you... Um, as soon as you touch it on the paper, the bristles all fold up. That's not actually very helpful for you. You want something that's going to be um, strong enough to hold its shape. So backing with my card, these are moving along. You can see them drying. I may, uh, I may add some other colours over the top. And this one's not really in shadow, it's just pressed up against the other one. But... Just to create a nice rounded effect. I'm going to, to put a little bit more of this uh, mix in here. This is the slightly purple you can create that from your ultramarine blue mixed with your alizarin crimson and just let that roll If you don't want sharp highlights, and quite often I'll go back in with mine and just soften them away. But that's one reason I quite like having the, um, the yellow underneath. So you don't have really harsh, sharp highlights. And back in. The other thing people sometimes will um, they'll come back and say, oh, my berries aren't 100% uh, round. Well, actually, they don't need to be. If you go out and have a look at a holly tree and look at three or four different boughs, you will find that the berries aren't all perfectly round. Nature doesn't do um, health and safety and sp specified sizes and shapes. They just grow as they grow. So when you paint and draw berries and things like that, sometimes it's actually better to not have them 100% perfect. 
they will often look far more natural. All I'm going to do now is just on this side here, because this bear is sitting on top, I'm just going to lighten just along that edge. It's just a tiny, tiny light difference. And then the last one we have is the big one in the middle. So I've got my cadmium on, a little bit of water now, just so that I can get it to move in the directions I want. There's a couple of spaces in there that I'm probably going to go back and fill in. And my alizarin drying out rapidly today. Tiny bit of the shadow. And I'm going to put that on that side. Back into just the pure alizarin. And you'll find sometimes it's easier to start inside and push the paint to the edge rather than starting at the edge and trying to keep it all perfectly perfect. I'm going to drop a few random little bits of alizarin in this just to give it a little bit of a texture. Because this one's on the top, it's the main one that you're going to see. Or the first one, I should say, it's uh, the one that's going to grab you in to begin with. So I've got all those in. Now, I can put on any additional layers of paint that I want to. Or I can put on a very fine glaze in places which is what I'm doing here so this is just a little glaze of yellow I'm going to go back over some of those highlights and it just gives it a nice lift in places but it's a matter of personal taste if you don't want to do it or you don't like it don't This one, I think, wants a little bit more colour. But most of these I'm quite happy with. This one, maybe a little lift out along this bottom edge. Nothing too drastic, just a light lift out. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of the yellow back into that. Just warms it up. Here where I've had, um, where the leaf is over the berry, I'm just going to go back in and strengthen that dark edge on the leaf just to make it absolutely clear that that leaf is sitting over the top of the berry. There's a little space in here that would be part and parcel of the leaf. And here I'm just going to add a little dark in underneath those. In a way, it's... Um, it's like negative painting. So where there's a little space in the berries and you potentially would see the leaves or just a dark space behind them. I'm just going back in now and making sure that those spaces are dark enough and in the right places to make sense. So 
this is the green that we um, were using before, which is the hooker's green with a little bit of burnt sienna and um, ultramarine blue in it. It gives a really, really dark, rich green. So I'm quite happy. Have a look at it afterwards. Let it all settle. I may go through. I may put um, another wash on uh, one or two of those berries. But at the moment, I don't think so. I think that's um, absolutely fine. Hopefully, you're in agreement with that. Have a go. One of the tips I'd give you before you start on something of this size or smaller, I mean, I've got some little tiny ones over here. I don't know if you can see them. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, here. So before you start thinking about something this size, it's worth just draw yourself a few berries up and um, have a little practice on that first. I've got tissue on this because I've got a number of um, pictures on the go and I don't want to get paint on top of something else. The only thing left on here really to do is um, the, little, the little knobbly bits that you get at the end. And all I'm going to do is take some of that green into a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Green and red give you browns through to black. So it's a nice dark colour. And I'm just going to have a look at my berries and decide where I'm going to put my little, my little knobbly bit. Um, and this one, put it in there. Now, I would like to say there's an easy way of explaining this, but there isn't. So I just treat it. Um, sometimes just as a dot, but sometimes it's actually more like a little, um, like a little triangly bit. And wherever you put that will indicate, for want of a better explanation, the, the shape. That would be the top of that berry. Um, it's a good idea to not have them all in the same direction. They um, they don't grow like that, so good idea not to um, paint them like that. If you're wary about doing it um, with a paintbrush, you can um, just pop it in with a pen. Um, pretty much that's going to be it, I think. And we've just got this one. Well, there we go. All done. Finished. Don't forget to sign your work. You can sign it with your initials. You can sign it in pen. Um, the important thing is to sign it. Okay, everybody. Happy painting. Get on with it. Have a go. Have a play. Don't get hung up on the, the absolute perfection of things. They're not really. It's just how we think they are. Go and have a look at some... Uh, holly berries you'll see that they're some of them are round some of them are quite elongated some of them are a bit squished if you're looking at a bunch of berries grown together then obviously you're seeing parts of them from different angles so they don't have to be a perfect round and sometimes they look better when they're not so uh, yeah good luck get on with it get your christmas cards painted up and um hopefully see you next week bye